Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just, I'm just loosening it up. I'm whoa. just loosening it up. So whoa, whoa, what are you doing? I'm just loosening Don't it. Don't you know how to open a pack? Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we talk about magic. Because we are wizards. No. Well, wizards um, of the coast. Yes. We talk about Magic the Gathering. Because um, we're just talking about fun stuff that we've been into. And uh, I am a super big Magic the Gathering fan. Uh, the new set comes out uh, next week, Ixalan. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, Merfolk, Pirates, Dinosaurs, and Vampires. Wow. All fighting over a lost city. I always like the merfolk uh, looks, as like looks super creature sweet. type, yeah. Um, and uh, but for icebreaker, instead of a traditional icebreaker, given that we gave you lots of those in the last one, <laughs> uh, we're gonna crack a pack of magic cards. All right. I got no mine. My All pack. Right. My All pack right. goes. All your, right. Your All pack right. will be cracked in the privacy of your own home. No. Wait, we're only cracking one pack. Yes. Why did I have I this even, conversation? Why did I? No. I thought we were each gonna. Unpack one. I ended up buying three because you can never go to the store and just buy one pack. I bought one. Oh, no, I don't get to open one. I'm a man of <sighs> discipline and will. All right. All right, so let's see what we got here. Um, let's start from the commons. Uh, so this is a pack of Our Dose Station, which is the current set. Uh, and is super sweet. Uh, Aven of Enduring Hope. A four and a white. A bird cleric. Uh, four and a white for a three three flyer. When Aven of Enduring Hope enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Mm. I like it. I like it. Mm-hmm. Like like flyers in white. So so as somebody who really enjoys um, white and green and black, flyers in white, um, three three for five with an upside is pretty decent. Oh, this card's so good. <laughs> uh, Blur of Blades, uh, an instant for one and a red. Put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. Blur of Blades deals two damage to that creature's controller. I have seen people lose games <laughs> to Blur of Blades. Aerial Guide. That's a fairly common reprint. Yeah. Two and a blue for a 2 2 flyer. Uh, whenever it attacks, another target attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. Um, so this is this is a different one. Because the, the, the reprinted one is always Windrake, mm. which is also a 2 2 flyer for, mm-hmm. for 2 and a blue. This one is like Windrake, but better. Yeah. Because it makes other things fly, guides yeah. them into the air. The, uh, the flavor text is Kefnet taught us to turn obstacles into advantages. <laughs> oh, Canra Eternal. A one and a black for a 2 2 um, with Afflict 1. So you don't know anything about our devastation, do you? No, I okay. do not. So cool. what's yeah, there's all kinds of new mechanics. Yeah. Uh, so afflict is uh, whenever the creature becomes blocked, mm-hmm. it deals uh, whatever the afflict value is to the player that controls the blocker. Mm-hmm. So it's like something sneaks through, anyways. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so it means that e- even when you're blocking, you're blocking those two twos, they're still getting in for damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, ooh, Rampaging Hippo. Uh, four and green, green for a creature. There's a hippo. For it, there's a five, six, which is nice. That's got a fat butt. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's trample. Uh, and you can also cycle it for two. Mm-hmm. So you can pay two mana to discard it and draw a card. Yeah. Manalith is a mana rock uh, for three colorless. You can tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Pretty normal. Uh, the Thorn Moloch is also a card that I have seen do a bunch of work. Uh, two and a red for a 2-2. Two, two. Mm-hmm. It has prowess. Mm-hmm. So whenever you... I forget where they introduced prowess. It became a, like a big thing in... I want to say Cons of Tarkir. Mm-hmm. And uh, because prowess is the Jeskai mechanic. But, uh, yeah, so anytime you cast an instant or sorcery, it gets, uh, or non-creature spell, sorry, so instant sorceries, artifacts, planeswalkers, you name it, uh, it gets plus one, plus one, and it has first strike as long as it's attacking. Mm -hmm. So it pays you to be aggressive. Without weakness is a card that I have seen people play sometimes. Uh, for one and a black, it's an instant target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn, and you can cycle it for two. 
So I think the cycling makes it better because you can try and trade it for something good. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it is also like it can blow you out in the right situation. A cunning survivor, a creature, for, a one-three creature for one on a blue. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, Cunning Survivor gets plus one, plus zero oh until end of turn and can't be blocked. This, especially in Standard right now, because um, Shadows of Innistrad reintroduced Madness, mm -hmm. which is cards that get advantages when you discard them. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a bunch of Standard decks on Channel Fireball with uh, that use... Um, madness effects to to discard and buff cards like Cunning Survivor, and uh, then kill you. Uh, Traveler's Amulet. This is a common reprint. Um, There's a one mana artifact, and for one, and sacrifice Traveler's Amulet. You can search for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle. There we go. Starting to get into the uncommons. Yeah. I so I'm super colorblind, and I can never tell. Mm -hmm. What the actual rarity marker is? Oh yeah, yeah. Never, never like figured it between out between black and silver, or between yeah, silver. Yeah, it just and gold. doesn't like it. Never coded in my brain. Ah, uh, yeah. So Razaketh's right. Three black, black for sorcery. Search your library for a card and put that card into your hand. Then shuffle your library. It cycles for one. This is this is bargain basement demonic tutor. Mm -hmm. It's like demonic tutor, except demonic tutor is one and a black. Um, but you can cycle it. So at the very at worst, it draws you a card. Uh, Torment of Scarabs. This is uh, one of the curses they introduce. Uh, so at the beginning of Enchanted, it's a it's a three and a black for an enchantment, uh, which is an aura curse. It enchants a player rather than a creature. And at the beginning of the Enchanted player's upkeep, they lose three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. So. Like, oh, it's not as good as stab wound, mm. which is just lose two life every turn. I, I have killed some people with stab wound. <laughs> um, Burning Fist Minotaur. A one in a red for a two one first strike creature. Uh, and for one in a red and discard a card, it gets plus two plus zero oh until end of turn. So you can get you, you can get some some neat madness stuff. You can get some synergy if you're in. Uh, is it is it red blue? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Is it? Oh, I hate you. And I believe this is our rare. Yes, this is our rare. Ramanap Hydra. This is real good. Vigilance. Yeah. So so three and a green for a snake Hydra. That is a three three vigilance reach. Trample. If you control a desert, which are the cycle of uh, special lands for both Amonkhet and our devastation, it gets plus one. If there is a desert in your graveyard, which is very common because all of the deserts cycle, mm -hmm. um, it gets plus one, plus one. So if you've got a desert on the battlefield and a desert in your graveyard, you get a 5-5 five, five Vigilance Reach Trample Hydra <laughs> for four mana. It's It's a bargain. <laughs> And uh, we got a mountain and a warrior token with vigilance, which is sweet. I am pretty happy with uh, with my pack. And I don't have any basis of comparison. Um, These cards are real good. Uh, they sound really good. I would <laughs> I would certainly put some of them in the packs that I have. But uh, you and I both commented in when we were going out to get the packs that uh, it seems like none of us have. Neither of us have played in the last year. I, I officially regard myself as a fake Magic player. <laughs> um, I, I, and that is what I tell people when they're like, "Oh, you play Magic?" I'm like, "No." Mm -hmm. um, and actually, that's not true. I, I have, I, I realized I have played Magic since when I told you. I thought the last time I played Magic was when we were in Scotland last year, but that's not true. I did a conspiracy draft mm. um, when when uh, Conspiracy Take the Crown came out. Mm. No, I'm pretty sure the last time I played was against Ted. Yeah, we no, I, I, my, my workplace has like a very uh, relaxed magic scene. Uh, I know lots of people who are in like magic play groups, and I, I've had plenty of invitations, and I never take people up on them. 
because I'm a fake magic player. <laughs> I own magic cards. I own like enough to fill a, a, a very small box. And I occasionally pull them out and turn them sideways with other people, but not really. Mm. So, yeah, I watch a lot of magic streams. Mm -hmm. I listen to magic podcasts. But I don't actually play, like, not just paper magic. I don't play magic online. Mm -hmm. I don't play duels. Um, I play duels origins i think because there were a bunch of like cool story things that i wanted to see but like i don't i don't play magic i just consume it which i suppose isn't that weird no lots of people who watch baseball don't play baseball yeah yeah i um it's been a while since I've played. Um, we were my my fr like the the other games group that I'm in. We were uh, more heavily into it a few years back, but um, I've never really been able to sit and watch games of it. Um, I find more interest in playing it than legit. Than, I don't know why yeah. I find it so appealing, but yeah. I do. Podcasts are interesting. The problem is, is if I'm not actively buying cards, then the podcasts and commentary on it is a little bit harder for me to follow. Hmm. Um, and I guess we can talk about our experiences with the sets in a little bit. But um, now, whenever I engage with it, other than say buying packs for podcasts. It'll be because uh, the games group will set aside a Saturday to do a draft tournament. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I have... So, I, I, for some reason in my mind, I thought you were going to have more cards than me. But the way you described it is one box. Uh, it is a smaller box than you were holding out your hands. Yeah, see, so yeah, I've got probably three card boxes no. full. Yeah. And then I have a series of fat pack half boxes, which are, like, full. I even have a couple packs... We call it foil land, where it's just Doug put land and then wrapped it in tin foil and called it foil land for for jokes. Nice. So uh, in a in a plastic tote, which you can imagine what the size of a plastic tote is, yeah. at least the the whole of the bottom is covered with boxes of magic cards. It's oh. not full, it's not a full box yeah. of tote, but no. I um, a coworker uh, for a Secret Santa bought me a holiday pack. Oh, those are fun. Um, I got one of those. And ones. Uh, it had five packs of cards and it had like a little box for mm -hmm. organizing your cards. And I have just enough magic cards that it fills that box. Ah, yeah. And I have no more. Well, now I guess I have one pack more than that, which means everything is ruined and I have to reorganize everything. But I suppose the super nerdy thing of what I have, this, this is an idea that we grabbed, or I grabbed from Doug, was we went to um, KW Surplus and bought these like briefcase things uh, that we used to carry our... Uh, constructed decks in and including spin downs and tokens and stuff like that so you can have you know I, I think I have probably five or six constructed decks in there in card boxes that are all sleeved but Doug I think at one point had like 11 of them in this and so you can just like pick up your constructed decks and go and play so, so I want to be 100% clear with you um, if I sat down at like a pre-release or something uh, which I mean is unlikely I haven't been to a pre-release since uh Dragons of Tarkir, which I guess is only last year. Mm -hmm. If I sat down at a pre-release with you, and you're across the table from me, and you have like this metal briefcase that you've presumably handcuffed to your wrist, <laughs> and you 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 pull it up and you unclip and it, and open it up, maybe there's a light effect that comes out of it to like like makes your face glow like Pulp Fiction. And you just, you just open it up and take out it. I'm fucking walking away. Like, yeah. by the time you've popped the top on that bookshelf, or on that, not the bookshelf, on that briefcase, I'm gone. It's not even tap, tap, conceit. It's just conceit. No, it's, it's, <laughs> who are you and what are you doing here? Well, I, I suppose we're focusing a little bit too much on, on how we play now. Maybe we should go back and talk a little bit about uh, our introduction into the game. Yeah, I, I... One of my friends got me into magic when I was 10 years old, and mm. I had a collection of cards that, I don't know, can be best described as complete and utter trash. Because mm. um, I had no money, and I, I couldn't like afford magic cards. We just traded a lot. And I knew how to trade cards, so I had cards, but I didn't know what made, like, how the game worked, really. Um, I'm sure, like, I'm 100% sure I played it with people, and I'm 100% sure that we played it wrong. We were 10. <laughs> um... 
but yeah, that that collapsed fairly quickly. And then when I was at PAX East in 2015, I was there with Ryan Walsh. And we did, we, we were looking for ways to kill time that weren't in the expo hall. Mm -hmm. And there was a big magic thing there. And we were like, hey, what's, the, what's up? And they're like, so here's the deal. Here's two free packs of magic cards. Or, or like starter packs. Mix them together and you'll have a deck of magic cards. And we're like... Oh, okay. And uh, and we have this, like, tournament-y thing, uh, which is, like, three game. You play three games, and, you know, if you... if you For every game you win, you get a pack, and you get you get a deck to play in this tournament-y thing, in addition, you know, that sort of price of entry. And the price of entry was, like, five bucks. And we're like, that seems like a really great way to kill an hour before the panel that we want to go to. Mm -hmm. So uh, we competed. I won. Mm -hmm. um, due to essentially no skill on my own part. No, oh, beginner's luck is the the greatest. Oh no! It, like beginner's luck implies that my opponents weren't just completely screwed by their own decks. <laughs> I did not get lucky. Uh, they got unlucky. Mm. Uh, one of them was a ten year old, and I felt a little bad. <laughs> but I won, and I got a deck box and a pack of cards or something. But. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a good time. We started playing it in lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the end of that weekend, we're like, oh, so we play Magic now. That's a thing that we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've been sort of in and out. Like I, like I said, I consume a lot of Magic media. I listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. I watch streams. Uh, Loading Ready Run does a whole bunch of really cool Magic streams, um, including the pre-pre-release, which, as of recording, starts in like half an hour. I'm totally going to watch it. Mm -hmm. Um Channel Fireball is a bunch of people who are professional magic players. And, like, I love watching someone who's really good at magic play magic. Um, especially in Magic Online, because I, I find it easier to sort of follow what's going on. Um, like, the, the, the Pro Tour stuff is, is just so fast. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's fun. Like, I will watch Luis Scott Vargas just wreck people's faces for hours. Hmm. I got involved in the game around about 2010. Um, it was actually kind of a funny thing. So, uh, I, all the all the friends were playing. Uh, this was around the, the 10th core set, so M10, M11. Um... <clears throat> The first set that I remember starting to purchase was Rise of the Eldrazi, which is a riff on Lovecraftian, uh, giant, scary, world-destroying monsters kind of deal. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, though. So, uh, people in high school played. I never played as a child. And I, that's the difference. I guess you played as a child, right? Yes, I did. So, I didn't, I, I didn't do D&D &D and I didn't do magic as a child. People at school, in high school, would play magic, but... It always seemed a little too complicated. Like, even Pokemon and, and Yu-Gi-Oh! was sufficiently complicated that I wasn't super into it. I was uh, I could play, but we your, weren't really necessarily following the rules. tiny, soft, huckle brain yeah. just couldn't... So, so magic seemed a little, so, a little weird, and I didn't have that one person that helped gateway me into the, the thing. So, I didn't play it as a kid. And so, friends who I played D&D &D with, which of course, magic and D&D &D is just like peanut butter and jelly... Um, they were playing, so I would watch, and then occasionally I would feel a little, a little ambitious, and they would give me a constructed deck to join in and play. Um, but I, I resisted buying cards of my own, and I, and I knew I had enough self-knowledge to know that if I started purchasing cards, that would be the end. For example, today I went to buy one pack so we could crack it for this podcast, and you bought three packs. Who buys one pack? I do. You do. Uh, Discipline. So we uh, we did a, a mini tournament. I also I never first pick a gold card. <laughs> um, yeah, we were playing a tournament of some kind. Of, I don't know if it was a we would crack safe. Uh, yeah, that's that's. So the way we we'd usually do it is you'd buy three boosters and you draft it. You open it up and you draft in a circle until all the cards are chosen yep. and stuff, and you just go through the three. So I did that. I participated. And I didn't understand how the prize pool was going to go. I thought, I'm going to be really shitty. I might even finish at the bottom. So, But I made the, the rule, I made the promise that, okay, if I win any cards 
in this tournament, I'll start buying Magic cards. I didn't realize that my friends, the way they drafted, I just assumed some sort of like first, second, third, or winner take all. No, it's, you know, you, you, pl you play, you rank, and then from the ranking, player one gets to choose a card. Player two chooses a card. Three, and you go through and you draft, like basically choose all the rares or the, uh, the ultra rares. And then the common or the mm -hmm. uncommons, and then you just take the the common cards and you usually shuffle them and divvy them out. Or in my case, because I had no cards, they just gave me all the the common cards. Mm. But basically, I didn't realize that I was going to win something no matter what. What? And so I, I shot myself in the foot, and Doug even at, later on la like laughed about it because he didn't he knew that I didn't know this. So boom, that's how I started playing. So I got involved with Rise of the Eldrazi. I enjoyed a little bit of Scars of Mirrodin, but I hated the Phyrexian Poison Counter system. Uh, after that was Innistrad. Innistrad was super cool because it was werewolves and vampires and stuff, mm. and we all really got into it. We did not like Avacyn with the angels. For some reason, that mechanic didn't jive with angels us. Angels are great. Angels are great, but it, we did not like it from a flavor point of view of everything else. We, we really just liked the werewolf mechanics and, and everything else. The zombies um, and then after that we went back to Ravnica we really enjoyed the the first two sets and then all of us as a group just seemed to peter out with with um, Dragon Maze and that's it mm -hmm. after Dragon Maze or after the second set from Return to Ravnica um, none of us really bought anything we would buy commander decks we would play constructed decks we we like I like tribal decks like goblins or merfolk or whatever um, but yeah, just never really played up until Scott. I love the idea of Commander, and I love watching people play it, mm -hmm. and like I think that it's a format I would really enjoy. It's a lot of fun. But every Commander group I have seen is so competitive that it's like, <laughs> oh, did you, did, you, did you kibosh my infinite combo? Well, then you lose. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, are you, are you playing blue? Oh, yeah. you're not playing blue... You don't have any counter spells. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just like, because eh. that was that was that was the thing that gave me pause. Like, that's why I never bought any singles. Mm -hmm. Is I don't ever want to pull out a deck and have somebody go, oh, I just don't want that. I don't. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care enough about that. And that made me not buy cards. And yeah. that I yeah like I I will happily like play decks that I have, but I don't really buy cards. Yeah. So what's your favorite archetype, your favorite color, your favorite thing? What do you do? What do you do in Magic? So I like uh, we our joke earlier about is it. I like the, the red-blue because okay. I, I like the, su the super aggressive of red and the weird fuck up stuff with blue. I hate you so much. I know, I know. It's, it's really terrible. Don't but you I, talk to me. I don't know. I, I typically enjoy a lot of weird combinations like that, like Orzov's white-black is kind of fun to play too. Um... As I said, I really enjoyed the Innistrad flavor. I, I think, yeah, the, the flip mechanic with like transforming a werewolf from a human into a werewolf and back mm -hmm. was a super, super cool mechanic, and I have a whole werewolf deck built around it. I'm going to blow Huck's mind when I tell him it's a werewolf planeswalker. Yes. Um, Arlen Cord. Pardon? Arlen Cord. No, sorry. I'm thinking of... Sorry, I, I uh, Garuk, who was not a werewolf, but he flipped. But he, but he, flipped. he was the yeah, first yeah. flipping a, planeswalker. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but anyway. I, I really enjoyed that, and I just loved Eldrazi, because it is so demoralizing, either to use, but also to have it used <laughs> against you, because it's just these giant creatures that they don't even have to do damage to you to just obliterate your yeah. side because with with the uh, with annihilator the, yeah they annihilator just, they just you get just, rid of your stuff and I'm you're so, like well I'm sorry before before you my even game's over now yeah before you even assign blockers you better start taking stuff off the, the battlefield yeah no my mine is it's hilarious that you say you say is it which is red blue which yeah. is which is aggression and uh sort of control mm. uh because my colors are as of cons uh, Abzan, they are they are green, white, and black. <laughs> I have white because I'm going to play lots of creatures. I have black because I'm going to remove lots of your creatures, and I have green because I'm going to put counters on my white creatures, and I'm going to turn them sideways. No, and that's all I want to do is play creatures, put enchantments on them. Theros was so much fun with all the enchantments, and I have a really fun enchantment deck. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, I want to play creatures and turn them sideways. No. That's all I want out no. of a game of magic. I don't. I don't really do combos. I don't really. I just. 
like if I have a combo, it's I play this spell that puts more counters on this creature that I turn sideways. Yes. <laughs> Which is not how combos work. Oh man. But yeah, magic. Oh, I, I do have a one conclusion thing. I'll Good, go because we're at the conclusion. Yeah, I'll go I'll go first so you can have a thing. But the question is, what's your best magic fuck up? So my best magic fuck up was when I was first playing. Doug's never gonna let me live this down, which is why I want to immortalize it in the podcast. I was playing against him, and and uh, and I had a black deck. He had, um, or sorry, I had a dragon's horn that allows you to gain one life for uh, a black creature spell. And, sure. Or he had it. Yeah, that's what it is. Dude, he, we're getting in the weeds here, buddy. Yeah, he had it, and he had sanguine bond. I cast a black scorpion card which allowed him to gain life and I only had one life left and I had no creatures on the field so uh, it allowed him to gain life which means when he gained life Sanguine Bond forced a player to lose a life so I lost life and killed myself by casting a spell. Nice. So that's my best fuck up. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of one. Like I have definitely made like mistakes and made mistakes that, that, that have lost me gains but I can't think of anything that's like that entertaining. Yeah. Um... <laughs> My my biggest like not understanding the rules thing was trying to cast creatures on other people's end steps. Oh, and they were like that doesn't work. I'm like it totally works. And they're like, no, it doesn't. I'm like, oh. short of which mechanic? Flash. Was it? Flash. Yes. But yes. Magic. Play magic. Have fun. Um, or comment and tell us to play Yu Gi Oh. Uh, which, as I understand it, is also quite fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, who are you? Where do we where can we find you on the social medias? Uh, so. Uh, at RJ Huckle on the Twitters, Ryan Huckle on Instagram, uh, my website, ryanhuckle.com. Ooh. And you? Uh, similarly, I'm Concept Crucible on Twitters. Um, I am not on Instagram. Or I am, but I don't actually use it. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, you can find me on at jimtiggle.com. God, can't remember my own website, which is my own fucking name. Yeah, it's but don't forget. Idea. Patreon. We have a yes. Patreon as well. And you can support all our work on Patreon. Yeah. Um, or And you can find out more at wootsuriot.com, which is all in the doobly-doo, which is somewhere in the pants region, if you're watching. Mm-hmm. So yeah, play games. Have fun. Yes, indeed. I'm cool. Jim. <laughs> I'm Ryan. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not signing off the podcast. We're just going to do this forever. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> yes. No, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Tap, tap, concede. That's, that's, that's a... I'm going to think I am different magic. Podcasts. I am totally going to steal it because we are not making I money. I don't of this. think we have the right. Damn it. All right. Stay FPC. awesome. That's our thing. Stay awesome. Say something. Saying something. I have said, why is there a dead deer on your, I was super worried your story was going to get like deep in the weeds. Well, it's because that's how, how I roll is 